This is the Grow Boss. This is Cannabis Hotline. I'm the Grow Boss. I've got a couple more things to do before the show starts, but we'll get on it in a sec. Be right back.
Hey, this is The Grow Boss. The show will start in a couple minutes. It's Cannabis Hotline, and if you have any questions about growing cannabis, using cannabis, smoking cannabis, go ahead and call. The number is 84 Grow Boss. The show will start in a couple minutes. I'll be right back. get started I just thought I got a couple of guys here on live chat so I was wondering how's the sound coming across I got a new microphone it's wireless I can grow throughout the store so before we start start the show I thought I'd get a little bit of feedback on how the wireless mic is working can you guys hear me okay let me know and then we'll go from there Hi, it's the Grow Boss. The show's going to start a few minutes early. I've noticed that I run out of time on Saturdays because I have to open the store at 10. Where on Sundays I have to open the store at 11. So I've started, I've started starting the show on Saturday a little bit earlier so we get a little more accomplished. I have a lot to go over today. So keep watching. The show will start in a minute. And if you have any questions, you can call 84 Grow Boss. <laughs>
actually this is from old me. Guy comes in and buys soil, always rolls the biggest drum. That's a good customer. Okay, it's time to start the show. Hi, this is Cannabis Hotline. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. So if you have any questions about growing cannabis, smoking cannabis, using cannabis, medical questions, go ahead and call the show 84 Grow Boss. I'm the Grow Boss, and I'm here to answer any questions you have. Of course, we have a couple of things to go over today, like uh, I've got some new used equipment. I thought maybe we'd spend some time and go over what I buy it for what you guys should expect when you go to a hydro store to sell it, how to get the best prices. Of course, I'd like to go over a little bit more about Project Grow House if we get the time in the show. And um, we'll talk about customers a little more too because this week we had like a 13 year old kid come into the hydro store. We had a 13 year old kid come into the hydro store with his mom. And it's weird, right? It's weird when my customers bring their kids in the store at any age. But to bring a 13-year-old, and then, like, the analysis process starts, right? So what's the first thing you do is you look at the kid. And you think about that episode of Hank, Hills where, Hank Hill where they go to uh, Seeds and Stems. Because Bob is going to grow some roses. And you look at this kid, and this, there's something wrong with the picture. He's got that War Games hair from Matthew Broderick that looks like he just wakes up and I can't do a very good imitation, but I think you know what I mean. He's got the hair that stand up. It looks like the super cuts. I just woke up and gelled my hair, haircut. Stripes, plaid pants. I mean like, right? There's something wrong. And the mom's a little wacky with the purse hanging off the elbow. And she's a little bit older, like she had a late life kid. They don't dress right and it's weird. And now I've got the 13 year old asking me for sulfur. So he's, he wants sulfur, right? So these are the sulfur prills that we use and when you get mold and mildew in your, in your garden, you might add a little sulfur and a sulfur burner to get rid of it. Kid wants sulfur prills. So I ask him what he's using it for. Oh, he's got some experiment he's running for school. So I asked his mom, what's, he, what's your kid using this for? I don't really know. So I asked kid for a little bit more about the experiment, the experiments that he's doing, because I'm fairly versed in science experiments. And the kid decides to tell me, oh, I'm trying to uh, add a ring group onto another molecule. No, no, that, that doesn't even mean anything to me. So what's the experiment? And the kid looks at me and says, well, do we really have to get into this? And I said, yes, absolutely. So he comes up with an answer about aluminum sulfate. Okay, at least that was a real answer. I go back into the back of the store. I'm doing some work in the back, and I realize, you know what? Something's not right. As Chuck, you guys remember Chuck, works at the store. Chuck sells them the sulfur prills, and they leave. So I walk up to the front. We look up aluminum sulfate. It's an exothermic reaction. I don't believe it's explosive. I do believe it's an enormous amount of energy in the terms of heat. So I said, you know what? I don't need this problem. I walked outside and I was like, hey, excuse me for a sec. And the 13 year old kid mom turned around and I was like, you know what? I think I sold you the wrong bag. Can I see that? The kid holds up his bag and I snatch it out of his hand. And I looked at the mom and I was just like, look, I don't think you understand what your kid's doing. And I know that I don't want to be on the news four days from now and your kid burns his face off with an exothermic reaction. So let's do this. Here's your $5 back. If you have a problem, feel free to report my business to the Better Business Bureau. But otherwise, there is no way I'm going to get involved with your kid and selling him sulfur so he can burn his face off in your house down and kill someone and get a negligent homicide charge. Forget about it. And that's a big deal when you have to deal with customers, right? You have to be able to judge the situation. Because there's a couple of ways that you can run a hydro store. You can run a hydro store just trying to sell sh the most shit you can to people. 
I run my hydro story that way. That's not a bad way to run it. You don't answer any questions. You just tell them more and more and more. Get a lot of returns and a lot of customer complaints and a lot of bad reviews on Google like that when everybody explodes. Then as you own a store for years and years, you, you, okay, so Mike's not bad. All right. Then after you own a store for years and years, you learn that the trade-offs aren't always worth it for the profits. And if you get less complaints, you get more customers. And in the end, if you do a good job, you win. That was also the case with the mega meter <clears throat> because, uh, we sold every other major brand of meter in our store and they came back at an alarming rate. We were selling 120, $200 meters, dual meters, pH, EC, handheld, continuous monitoring meters. The continuous monitoring meters weren't so bad, but those handheld meters that we were selling, they were a disaster. They probably came back at about a third, maybe a quarter of the rate that we were uh, selling them at. And there's not much profit in them either, right? I mean, you look at eBay, the meter is probably like that, uh, I forget which meter, but you look at like a double meter, like a PPM pH meter, they're like 160 bucks. They cost us like 100 something, 110. The duels maybe even 120, 90, 80 for the regular. Very expensive for the retail store to buy. And then if you sell three and one comes back, I mean, that's more, that's, that's your profit. That's more than your profit. So being a retail store also means you sort of have to find the best equipment. The best equipment isn't always the highest price on the original sale. The best equipment isn't always the highest profit. The best equipment, it turns out, isn't even the equipment that uh, you're successful with. The best equipment for my hydro store is the equipment that doesn't come back. I mean, all the way down to uh, the used equipment, right? I mean, check out this used equipment. Like, uh, so I'm in Nevada, and we get a guy that uh, comes out from California and drops off stacks and stacks of stuff to me. As California moves toward the DE lights, um, they've been selling their single-end bulbs and, and single-end fixtures and hoods and stuff. So. If you guys need a free pair of rope ratchet light hangers, this would be the week to come get them from my store. All you have to do is peel a pair off for yourself, and I won't sell. I won't sell them to you for fifteen bucks. You can have a free pair. Peel a pair off for yourself. Yeah, I've been offering that all week, and no one's actually taken it. They started, but uh, no one's actually taken me up on that offer yet. So, all right, what else did we get? Oh, check this piece of shit out. Right. Oh yeah, look at that. This is a 400 watt hood. This is an exhaust fan. Sorry, I said 400 watt hood. This is a all-in-one 400 watt ballast built into the hood. You can see because the light area isn't the whole package. This part right here has a magnetic ballast in it. The new ones have digital ballast, so they're much lighter than this one. But I paid 10 bucks for this. Why? Because honestly, I don't even think I want it in my store. The chance of, I probably stand a better chance if I take this fan off of it. I mean, the hood's already tall, right? So if you're in a 400 watt space, you're probably going to end up with like a shallow area anyway. And this is double the height of the hood. Plus, look at all those other hoods. None of them have this shit on here. So the probability of sale goes down as the equipment doesn't look familiar. Super heavy. Ah, this was a good one. Okay, so you guys always come in and ask me what the best ballast is. And I had one guy about a month ago in all of the history of me doing this, like 10 freaking years of doing this, the guy wants eight ballasts, 10 ballasts, something like that. He set up one bulb in my store in a hood and he turned on all the ballasts one at a time to see which one was the brightest. Um, I gotta say, some of them were brighter than others. And that was a surprising fact. I never really thought of it. However, 
It didn't matter if I had one of these ballasts or two of these ballasts the exact same. One of them might fire brighter than the other. And we tried digitals, and some digitals fired brighter than others as well. One of them was markedly brighter. It was a lot brighter. It was so much brighter, I thought it was going to burn out, but whatever. So we get this equipment, and what happens is like twice a year, so I'm a little store. I got 1,260 square feet, and a third of my store is dedicated to the studio. And then we've got the storage in the back. So the front of my store is like literally half the store. I have to be careful not to have too many brown boxes up front. We try to keep the colored boxes up front. So I pay attention to what I keep up front, what's in the back, what's in the way back, what's in the way, way back. And people come in and they sell me this stuff. And they, you know, somebody buys a magnetic ballast and a hood like this three years ago. They probably paid 250 bucks. Maybe if they were lucky. On Craigslist, it might have been 175 But I buy this stuff for $10 now, these hoods. I buy them for $10 with the glass. And I got a lot of them. And there's a lot more out there, too. A lot of people are going to double-end bulbs. When you go to a DE bulb, you tend to throw these away. You tend to sell them off. And you tend to replace them in really large quantities, too. So we get these waves of equipment that come up. And about twice a year, I get a guy who'll come in, he'll buy 10, 12, 20 ballasts. I think we have eight stores in town. Two of the stores are the biggest owned by the same guy. And then a new store just came up from a chain from Colorado. They are literally all in a row in the middle of town. Now those guys have 6,000 square foot warehouses. And just like my buddies at Dallas Fort Worth Hydro in Texas, Ryan, the guy who owns the store, He's got a, he had a bunch of big stores. And I remember going and doing my Texas, my Texas Roadshow. And I remember something that Ryan had said to me, and it was, it doesn't matter where they shop. Eventually, everybody comes here. And that's the reality about shopping at Hydro Stores, is all my customers shop everywhere. And all the other customers, and all the other stores' customers shop everywhere as well. And once you sort of think about it, it makes sense, because for my hobbies, I shop everywhere and on the internet. So you have to be integrated as a hydro store in a way that the mom and pops never were before. So to give you a little background on the hydro stores, um, five years ago, we probably had 3,000 hydro stores. Now we probably have 1,550. Waves of equipment. So now we have 1,550 hydro stores. So we started 2010. Up until about 2010, everything was mom and pops. All hydro stores, they were on the fringe. There was no corporations. There were no um, multi-store chain stores. There was none of that. Everybody was pretty much operated on their own. But then here in Vegas, things went legal in like 2011. So in about, a, in about 100 days, we went from zero to 50 dispensaries. Then over the next 100 days, they busted 40 of them, because it's easier to watch 10 dispensaries than 50, right? Then over the next year after that, they were busting the people that were selling to the, facility, to the dispensaries. So the dispensaries went out of business, and then they opened up hydro stores. So 2010, Vegas has 2 million people, and we have 6 hydro stores. I bought the 6th one. I opened up 2 more on the other corners of town, so now Vegas has 8 hydro stores. So as the dispensaries closed, we went from eight hydro stores to 16. Population remained two million. So twice as many stores, same population, same interest equals half the profit. So I closed two of my stores, shrunk the other one, moved it to this location for 70% less rent, and just sort of waited out the other stores. Now, my buddy, who I bought the hydro store from, owned one on the other side of town. So as the stores went out of business, I would call them up and I would offer them like a nickel on the dollar. And they'd get mad and bluster and, ah, I'm not, fuck you, I'm not doing nothing. Whatever. My friend Jason would call them and he'd offer them 10 or 11 cents on the dollar. Now, they were far more prepared for that. And then Jason would go buy their shit and then I would go split it with them. So as the hydro stores went out of business, we started buying their inventory. Otherwise, they would just dump it on Craigslist. 
Like that's the worst thing that I'm scared of is like one of the facilities go out of business, suddenly, and they have, facilities have already started changing their equipment and modifying their grows and bringing on new growers or different, do it different ways. So now that the facilities are doing this, they have a lot of equipment on Craigslist. And because some of the facilities were big growers anyway, they have a lot of equipment on Craigslist. So I try to buy it off Craigslist, one, to drive people to the stores, and two, because I have a lot of product on Craigslist too. See my pile of used shit, I sell it all on Craigslist. Literally, I've got like a bull ballast hood up there for a hundred bucks. Bull ballast wing, one of the wings up there for like a hundred bucks. Okay, so now we have, now it's 2010 through 2012, hydro stores double, and they start opening chain stores like I did. So the buying ships from vendors, from us buying from vendors, from the distributors, to chain stores buying from Alibaba and China and overseas and bringing in their own containers. And then you guys remember the two major distributors, there was Hydro Farm and Sunlight, right? So Hydro Farm has had some missteps over the last few years with the way they give credit and the way they open up stores on top of each other. And from what I've seen, Sunlight has remained like a very respectful corporation who understands, like I said earlier, returns profit up front doesn't mean profit in the long term or success and they've always seemed to be pretty um uh, respectable and forthright and so hydro farms seem to run into problems and then 2012-13 dl wholesale comes in to play oh, closer to the mic okay so let's see is that better all right so and then dl wholesale comes into play now, DL Wholesale was a distributor that pretty much brought all their stuff over from China, which I suspect the other distributors did, but they didn't hide the fact that they were bringing it over from China. So, suddenly, I could buy rope ratchets instead of $6.50, I could get them for $5.50 or $5. And instead of bulbs being only Hordelux and Ushio, now there's no name brands. Because as a new distributor, the, the old gang didn't let them in, didn't give them the solid products. Like they don't distribute GH and Botanicare. They don't sell Fox Farm Soil, stuff like that. They're not the kind of distributor that has everything and then some. So DL comes in. And they're fantastic, right? From terms of profit, I, I make more if I don't change MSRP because my cost is lower. But then I woke up the next day and because I bought my light hangers at 650, and they're now $5, my inventory has gone down by 15%. So if my store was worth $100,000 when I went to bed last night, it's worth, it's worth $85,000 today because I lost 15% because tomorrow I can buy it for 15% cheaper. Now, on the books, if you do last in, first out accounting, maybe not. If you do first in, first out accounting, definitely. But there are some real considerations with inventory and cost pricing and that's a big deal to think about because like literally I lost fifteen thousand dollars but you walk into my store and it looked the same I had all this shit on the shelves I have all that product in my store and yet it's worth 15 percent less now I didn't just change my MSRP so while the value may have gone down I was still able to sell it at the old price um, but now the prices are falling and we have a new distributor for competition. So there's Hydro Farm and Sunlight. Now there's DL, DL Wholesale and BWGS, Bloomington Wholesale. But I'm under the impression that even Bloomington Wholesale had like a dozen or so stores. And I believe they closed their retail locations. Now I can't tell you if they sold them or they just closed them. But I do know when a distributor closes Hydro stores, that's a warning sign. So over the next few years, we go from 3,000 hydro stores to where we are today, about 1,650 hydro stores. And that's, and oh, and we went from 0% mom and pop, maybe 1% mom and pop, to 33% mom and pop stores. In fact, the new store that just opened up in town is a chain store out of Colorado with like 12 locations. Chain stores with 12 locations don't buy from distributors the way that they used to when it was 12 mom and pops because they have buying power. And now suddenly a container of ballasts from Alibaba makes sense. A container of nutrients 
makes sense. And that's sort of the evolution of the hydro store. And then we talk about the forces acting upon a hydro store. For instance, when cannabis was illegal, 3,500 a pound or more sometimes. And at 3,500 a pound, people would come in and buy 1,500, 2,500, 4,000, 8,000 dollars worth of shit. To uh, you, know, you could justify spending that when a pound is worth 3,500. But as cannabis has become legal, and here in Vegas, it's on the radio. Uh, people come into my store and they ask me all the time what the laws are. I tell them there's no way for a guy like me to know. I just work behind a counter. I mean, the the, the politicians don't even know what the law is, so no point in asking me. And so here we have that position now. We're on the radio here in Vegas. Oh, it's recreational. I still don't know what that means. Does it mean I can go buy it? Does it mean I can grow it? Does it mean I can pull my wallet out and have a sack of weed fall on the floor? And, uh, and I can just pick it up and put it back in my pocket? Um, can I smoke pot the night before? And show up to work now without any problems? I don't know what recreational means. I think it means, well, I think it means you can put it in a brown paper bag until you get stupid and start a fight like they do with alcohol, and then we have to arrest you for being drunk and disorderly. And I gotta tell you, it's not gonna happen. Those arrests aren't gonna happen. I mean, you look at that company in California, they uh, drop a seed, they drop seeds, right? They, they, they drop like 35 pounds of bud at a dispensary. They'll tell everyone their weed is there. And like people will show up from all over the United States with cash to buy their seeds. In fact, I know someone who was second in line to buy the seeds. And the guy who was first in line was walking through the line trying to see if he could get anybody to give him 20 bucks to take his spot. He was there to sell it. And nobody took a spot. And nobody took a spot because cannabis smokers aren't like drinkers. It's an entirely different attitude. It's tough to get high and want to start a fight. It's just tough to do. Alcohol seems to tip the meter there in that direction. So I'm pleased to see it go recreational. But again, the question is, when it goes recreational, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to get more growers in my store? Does that mean I'm going to get less and I'm going to keep buying this used equipment here? Does it mean the price of cannabis is going to keep falling? I think it probably means a little bit of all of those things, huh? I mean, cannabis went from $3,500 to $2,000 a pound in the last two years. So I suppose it means all those things. And if you have any questions, I can talk for the whole hour. I can tell you the history of hydro for the whole hour. But if you have any questions, the number is 84 Grow Boss. This is Cannabis Hotline. I write the grow book and equipment guide. We have a couple of other books to help growers grow. We got gardens and grow rooms and the 20 week, oh, that's the poster issue, and 20 week tracker so you can take notes. Because I gotta tell you, you're never gonna get it right the first time. That's not how this works. You, it takes several times, just look at the show. It takes several times to get better and better. You get more comfortable with the equipment. You gain experience. You've seen these things before. And that's why I say your third grow is your first grow. Because by the time you get into the third grow, you'll have seen it a couple times. You'll have killed your crop once. You'll have messed up the second one, but have finished. You'll have worked out the idea of how the equipment works. And then from there, it's your third grow then on grows four five and six that's when you learn how to super crop because that's a big deal learning how to super crop you have to get that garden just right whether you're doing a scrog or you're doing big plants or you're doing a sea of green you've got you've got to know exactly how your plants are going to finish so you know how to grow them the whole way through in fact that's one of the things that I show you on this graph. Is that you have to know how you're going to finish. Because if you don't know how you're going to finish, how are you going to get there? And that's pretty much good advice for anything. You have to have a plan. And this chart right here is about that plan. And here's what this chart Awesome. And here's what this chart means. This chart means Oh, 
Oh yeah. I will fix this. Give me one sec. And it should be good. Okay. So this can this here. Uh, yeah. Gotta love GoPro equipment. So this one, this page here. So this page, this right here at the bottom, this is a graph about time. Down the side is how much light you have, 400, 600, 1,000 watts. Across the bottom is PPM. So you know if you've got 400, 600, or 1,000 watts about where your PPM should be. If you're growing this scrog shape with an eight-week flower and a four-week veg. If you're not, then, okay, oh boss, am I on the right account here? Let's see. So why haven't I gotten any calls yet? Am I on the right Skype account? Well, the number's 84 Grow Boss. If you'll go ahead and give the someone give it a call, let's see if I'm on the right Skype account. All right. Okay, let's get back to this. And that's important, right? Because you have to know when to top it because you need to make sure you get that bush on the plant so you end up with it like this. Because the last thing you want to do when you're growing cannabis, the last thing you want to do is lose that yield from that light. So, you don't want to grow wide plants under a narrow hood, and you don't want to grow big plants under a wide hood because that light relationship between absorbing the light and photosynthesis that's what this is all about all right i think i got a call perfect okay so mute the tv say hi you're on with the grow boss what can i do for you hi how you doing girl boss i just heard you at, I, I turned it off as soon as you said why you didn't get no uh, phone calls uh yet oh okay all right so it is working i am on the right account um, there's so many things to do when you're on the show, when you're doing the show. Now, you sound familiar. Yeah, yeah, I called you. You gave me help with that um, um, uh, venting before I had anything going. You uh, told me about uh, instead of using the fart snatcher, you know, use the 4-inch uh, vortex and the 4-inch vortex filter, and I did that. I got all of that now. Excellent. So, Grow Boss, okay. uh, uh, what's your question? That You got a question for me this week? Yeah, yeah, I got a question. Oh, oh, I wanted to tell you, thanks, man. I got the swag bag, and uh, thanks a lot for that. Happy to do it for you. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, this this what I got, man. I, I bought I, I uh, stumbled upon a um a business card, and uh, I, I bought a T eight. I mean T five. Uh, eight bugs. I got one and I got one ten going. So I, I bring them home Monday. I buy them. I look at them. They they look good, you know, and everything. But uh, I further inspect them, man, and it's purple all over these things. And she said they was uh three weeks old and it's just purple everywhere, man. You know, all of the stems, the the petioles was purple. And uh, I, I further inspection like it, they, they started to curl, curl over and everything. So I'm like, damn. But it looked good when I first got them. So oh, three of them is. Three of them is kind of small, and one of them was like uh, a, a foot tall, maybe. You know, I bought three of them or whatever. So uh, the one, the one taller one, the one taller one, I, I put them on for an attempt, and and the one tall one, the foot tall plant, it just like linked all the way over, like like it died. Now what I did, I had the uh, light all the way up, only two, only four bulbs on, so two hundred watts or whatever. I didn't even turn all eight bulbs on, and she just uh, slumped over. And like act like she want to die, so I, I took her, I smacked the shit out of her, like, get your ass up, I don't got time, you know, this is my first time doing this, like, I don't have time for this. So I, I smacked the shit out of her, you know, and uh, I stared her, and uh, she stood back up. She she actually, she she did st stand back up, but I think I messed up, man, because like I say, I, I had to meet her or whatever, and I seen all of that purple, I, uh, I, I took some cow mag, I mean, I, I think it said something like, three to five on the back of the bottle. I, I got these scoop things from my girl. I, I gave it barely anything, probably like a quarter of a meal cow mag, 
and uh, I, I get because two of them needed water. Two of them was uh, a little damp, so I, I watered two of them. One of them was the big one, so everything started looking good. But then, like a day after that, man, they just they look horrible, like they want to die. All right, I'm going to take your call off the air because uh, I'm going to answer your question with taking the call off the air because your mic was super loud. And I'm still trying to work out my mic. So when you guys send me a quick live chat and let me know if this is better, if my mic is working better now. And you, I'll tell you, whenever you have clones, whenever you get a clone, the transition going from seed. Okay, good. All right. So the, transmit, the transition going from seed, from clone into flower, into veg, it's tough because as the clones get roots, and as they're stressed from being cut from the plant, and as they're stressed from being transitioned, then this is what we're, this is what I'm talking about in terms of clones are a difficult thing to judge. What I suggest is when you get a clone and it just starts rooting, is you let it relax for a minute. He was talking three to five mils of CalMag. Um, CalMag is that's generally what you're looking for because it's got it's got of all the CalMag products. CalMag has the least cal most mag ratio of any of the products that I've seen. I think when you look at Cali Magic from GH, it's got more louder for me. It's got more. So is this better for the mic? It's got more mag, but it also has way more cal. So the percentage of mag to cal is now lower again. Okay, so in terms of that, before you start hitting plants with more light, you have to make sure that they're looking pretty healthy. Uh, okay, so you guys are saying my mic is low now, so how about now? So I'm using this mic, the Grow Boss, this mic. So this mic's always on now. How are we doing? How's that mic doing? Listen, I got a long time on the show. Let's fix this fucking mic problem once and for all, which I doubt I'm going to be able to do. So let's do that. Let's fix this mic thing while I get high. All right. So, Louise 67, how's this for my mic? You said you got your speakers up all the way. How's this? Mic is good. Oh, volume is low. I had to turn it up almost all the way too. How are we doing now? Because this is a new mic. I still have my old mic. I can go back to it if I need to. But this is, this is uh, my new mic. I'm hoping that it, just by keeping it right here. Okay. Yeah, low for you too. So let's reposition this mic. Oh yeah. Wardrobe. Now that looks kind of goofy. Is this better right here? Oh yeah. That's a professional show. More please. Ah, I don't think I can turn this up any louder. This is all the way up. Desktop audio is all the way up. Okay, good. All right, so we'll go from there. We'll see if I get let's see if I get any more problems with the mic. If I do, I'll go back to the other mic for this show. I can't turn it up anymore. Damn it, I can't turn it up anymore. <coughs> Where are we at? That sounds way better. Okay. Ah, the details, the details, the details. It's all part of the experience, just like I tell you with growing. Just like doing the show, just like anything that you do in your life, the more you do, the more you do it, the better you get. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Hey, you got to turn your TV or computer down. Hey, I'm the, you're on with the grow boss. Yeah, hey, hey, boss, how's it going? Hey, it's very good. Hey, I got a question. I, I ordered your complete package for sixty-nine bucks off your website, okay. and I, I'm anticipating the uh, getting it today. But the question I had in your chart you were just showing today, it, 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 what, it depends on what light you have. If I got two two four hundred watt lights, am I going to use your chart for your PPM calculator at eight hundred, or am I going to use it at four hundred? Okay. I appreciate the call, but just because I'm not sure how it's coming across, I'll answer that phone call, but I'm going to take you off the air. My apologies. 
the the problem that you're gonna the problem that you're thinking of is you're using 800 watts worth of electricity. You do not have 800 watts worth of light. You have 400 watts worth of light twice. Think about it like two separate flashlights. If they're not aimed at the same spot, then you have two flashlights. If you aim them both at the same spot, then you have twice the light. So if you were to aim your hoods at the plant, both at the same plant, then you would have 800 total watts of light. But until there, until then, you still have two 400 watt lights. You're gonna want that yield, right? So if you put two 400 watt lights and you aim it at one spot, so you have an 800 watt light, you would need a five by five area almost because 800 watts is almost a thousand. If you aim them both at a 400 watt space, how would you get twice the yield? Okay, so if you, if, you, if you need twice the space to get twice the yield, then you have two 400 watt lights and you're going to follow the 400 watt schedule. Um, okay, so, geez, it's just absolutely killing me with this mic thing. So should I stay with this mic or should I switch back to the other one? You know what, I'm gonna switch back to the other one and let's just see how that works. So this is new grow boss mic, new grow boss mic. Okay, this one now. This one is Old Grow Boss Mike, Old Grow Boss Mike. Which one do you guys like? Old Grow Boss Mike? New Grow Boss Mike, New Grow Boss Mike. You guys tell me which one you like better. Would two times CFL dual spectrum produce good buds? That's one of the old mic was better. Bah, son of a bitch. I just spent a hundred bucks on this thing trying to solve the, the problem. problem. Bah, son of a bitch. Oh, I got this super nice, super sweet little mic. Wireless, hooked up to the, oh man. See what I mean? It's like growing. Ah, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. But I bet if I started my show today, wait, old mic is better, old is louder, new, old, old, yeah, okay. So we're going to stay with this old mic, and maybe then when I walk around, I'll just use the new mic from now on. Bah! Your volume just doubled. That's a good mic, man. This is one of those blue mics. This thing was 49 bucks. <clears throat> I don't know if... Uh, what a bummer. <laughs> bah. So it's all in the uh, it's all in the finesse. Okay, so we got the introduction. Mic. I'm on my mic now. Desktop audio. Okay, badass for the money. Nothing decent. If you could make the new one louder, it could be better. I can't make this any louder. Let's take a call. Let's see how this happens. TV mute, headphones on. Say hi, you're on with the grow boss. Hi, I'm on with the grow bus. <laughs> hey, I, got a, I got a question for you, GB. You uh, you talk about um, you know, when it ripens and everything, to switch to a mag sulfur. Um, I'm in a hydroponic system, a recirculating one, and I was wondering if you could uh, recommend a product that is just mag and sulfur. Okay, yes, I can. As long as I've got you here, give me. Ah, see, this is where I would switch to the wireless mic. I thought it was just fine. I don't know what they're complaining about it. It's done fine on my tablet, but now I can't hear you. Oh wait, never mind. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Uh, I see what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Give me one sec. Let me put a couple things on the counter. I'll show you something. Okay. Oh, caller sounds good. I sound good. Excellent. Okay. This is one of the reasons I like doing my show from a hydro store because I can show you things in a way 
that I couldn't if I wasn't at my store. Now, this book is called All About Nutrients. <clears throat> and I go over a lot of stuff in there about nutrients. So, I'm going to give you a lesson right now. This is a 0 10, 10. Now, your question was you wanted me to recommend a mag sulfur product, right? I do. I use GH as well, by the way. Okay. So, yeah, this is probably the number one selling line in my store. This is probably the number two selling line. Then they're both owned by my... I have a delay on my, uh, my, my task. Can you say what it is? You have... Okay, so you're going to get a delay. So you'll see what I'm showing you in a minute. Um, okay, good. Okay. Yeah, you'll just, have to, you'll just have to kind of work it out because there is a delay, but you can't turn the speaker on, otherwise you won't be able to answer any of my questions. But it, wait, actually, right, if that's your only question, um, let me take the call off the air, I'll answer your question, and you can watch it. Before you do, though, right. I wanted to let you know the reason why I'm asking is because I do have all three of those, um, the GH products, but that flo that's floor and nectar there to, the to my far right, right, your left? Yes, sir. Now I was I was going to use that, but they but I was warned not to use it by the company in a recirculating hydroponic system because they said that it's been known known to cause biofilm. That's why I was really asking. Okay, so okay, so I still okay, yeah. so there's that and biofilm. Okay, so all right, and so then I'll. I'll I'll let you talk about it, okay? okay. I'll, I'll hang up. All right, thanks. Okay. In terms of this, this is mag sulfur. This, any of the sweet products like from Botanicare, pretty much every vendor makes a mag sulfur product. Um, the thing is, once you understand what's in these bottles, you start to understand that they're all pretty much the same thing. For instance, this probably the number one selling bottle in my store is Flora Bloom. It's a 054 and it has mag sulfur in it. This is a 01010 with no mag sulfur and this is a 001. So pretty much it's a 000 with mag sulfur. Mag sulfur, PK, PK with mag sulfur. In fact, In fact, this is another mag sulfur with PK. This is a 2548. This is a 4528. And this is a 054. If you multiply this by 9, we get a 4536, which is pretty close to a 4528. So powders are always more concentrated than liquids. Imagine if you took a salt, some salt, and you had a bottle of water. And you pour a little bit of salt and it would dissolve. And you pour a little more and it dissolves. You pour a little more, but it doesn't dissolve. And then you stir it and that little more does dissolve. Now imagine you just keep pouring salt in there until you squish all the water out. You, you know how much salt that would take, right? It would take that much salt. That's why these things are so much more concentrated and so dangerous for the home grower to use powders because it's nine times more. Like literally, this requires like a poof to get it in there. But again, this product, 4528, has mag sulfur in it, just like this product has mag sulfur. While not exactly the same, these two are very similar. These two, if you were to add, if you were to add PK to mag sulfur, you would get mag sulfur PK, mag sulfur PK, mag sulfur PK. Think about that, it makes sense. GH wants you to use more of this as you go into flower, right? Because you use more grow during grow and less bloom, and more bloom during bloom and less grow. That's why the guys who do this that run small systems buy gallons of bloom and quarts of grow, because flower is two times longer and the plants are 10 times bigger. So generally they buy bigger versions of this to match the grow. Now you always use micro, so that doesn't, that doesn't count. But in terms of what's in them, we now know that if you start flowering, boom, you get a little bit of bud development, right? Well, weeks three, four, five, maybe six, depends on how long the strain is, is going to get the 0, 10, 10 PK boost because you need a little more PK. 
when the buds are building and then toward the end weeks let's say five six seven eight depends when you finish you might be using both of these as this one you know goes away and you increase this one and as you increase this one we're talking about pk mag sulfur pk mag sulfur so this one is a supplement. So if you were to use equal amounts of this, it would be a 0, 15, 14. If you were to use an equal amounts of this, it would be a 0, 5, 5, because this is a 0, 0, 1, which is essentially a 0, 0, 0. So the combination of these two makes this. This is almost the powdered version of this, because when you add mag sulfur and PK, you get PK with mag sulfur, duh, and that's what this product is but wait it gets better and this is my always my favorite this is botanicare pure blend pro it's a 235 if we add up a 235 we get 10. so this nutrient has an npk rating of 10. n plus p plus k 235 equals 10. so npk 10 this one is a 200 it's all N. So if we had equal amounts of these, essentially we have a 235 plus a 2. So if we add these two together, it's 435. Now, one of the things that you guys always ask about is switching from veg to flower nutrients and when to do it. And I always tell you, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you got two, three weeks to transition on average, one and a half if you're good. And so it's not necessarily the thing to worry about. You don't want to just switch the nutrients sooner. I mean, that defeats the purpose. If you're looking for, if you're looking to do, you know, the best for the plant, you would switch the nutrients as she needs them, not as you want them. But then again, that's why I always tell you 85% of people fail because you guys do what you want to do, not what the plant wants you to do. So you switch into flower so you switch into flower and you have to decide to wait how long to wait before i've got to mark this book before you transition your nutrients the thing about that is when you're in veg you want more nitrogen and when you're in flower you want more pk that's why you add this to flower right because your flowers want more pk that's what buds want, is that PK boost. It doesn't require much. Come on, it's got to be in my book, right? right? I'm about to give up on this. So, I get so many questions about the Grow Diamond. Probably just better if I explain it. Ah, I have to mark my books. Yeah, so much homework, right? Like there's so many things to do. Ah, that's always interesting. I showed you the other picture earlier of this. What happens when you top them? But what happens if you want to grow bigger plants? If you grow bigger plants, you got a longer veg time. So you have a different shaped plant. That was important. I remember we were talking about that a little while ago. Okay, I give. So when plants are in veg, they want more nitrogen. When plants are in flower, they want more PK. So you add more PK. Now this is a two, three, five. Since the two is lower than the three and the five, this is a flower nutrient. Since this is a two, zero, zero, it's nitrogen. If we add nitrogen to this, it's a four, three, five. And suddenly the N is no longer the lowest number and when because n is no longer the lowest number what is a bloom formula now becomes a grow formula you could literally do your whole harvest with this bloom and some cow mac so you switch from the cow the plant always wants mag start to finish but you go from cow mag to mag sulfur about halfway through flower when the buds are full size at the end because the sulfur is a ripening agent think of a peach hanging on a tree it's hard 
we can't, humans can't eat it. A cow can eat it, a horse can eat it. They can digest starch. The peach ripens, it turns from starch into sugar, it falls on the ground, and then it, and then it breaks down into alcohol. So it's the starch, sugar, alcohol pathway, and that is, requires sulfur as part of the breakdown, which is why people talk about unsulfurated and sulfurated molasses, because it's part of that breakdown. In terms of a biofilm, I know exactly what you're talking about. When you leave the water for too long, you get that stuff that almost looks like a jellyfish that comes through it. Now, if GH says don't use their product for, a, for this product here in a reservoir, that's probably because they get a lot of phone calls. <coughs> the question would be, does it get a biofilm with everything? For instance, the last few weeks of flush, and when I say flush, I don't mean actively adding a flush and draining the PPM away from the roots and hydro. When I say a flush, I mean cut back on the nutrients, increase the mag sulfur, and go from there. Um, I don't know if that product alone will cause a film, but I do know what you're talking about, about GH causing a film, especially if you're in an ebb and flow where the water sits in the res all day long. Sometimes... Uh, you, you move it back and forth. Sometimes it's in an undercurrent system where it's always moving. So I don't know on, on which level that happens, but I do know that that product's been out for a while. And probably the only reason, the probably the only reason that um, uh, GH even admits something like that is because of the internet, because there's so many people available to contribute that information in such a small amount of locations that it starts to congeal and people can start to get hold and their fingers around the facts. And that's how I wrote my grow book because I get so many customers that come into my hydro store with the same problem that I was able to categorize and compartmentalize the problems and describe what was happening in the industry in terms of the customers and the growers and the plants and the products that we sell. I was able to compartmentalize them in a way that nobody had before because I work at a hydro store and I'm the guy who wrote the book. In my book, my book answers all the questions you guys ask specifically. You guys come in and you ask, what does this plant problem look like? Or I have this, what does it mean? And in my, in my, in my book, that's exactly, that's exactly what I do. I literally show you in my book, if it's this, it's this. If it's this, it's this. It can't be anything else by definition. It's always the same thing. You've got your light too close. You've overwatered. You've rotted the roots. You've overfed. You've beanstalked your plant. Oh, that's my favorite. When you guys tell me you LST, you low stress train these plants, that's always what the guys who overwater say. These are the things. Uh, that I deal with when you come into my hydro store and on my hotline when you call for help. These are the problems that I run into. So these are the answers that I give you in my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide, right? We go over specifically the things that the customers ask me because growing cannabis is easy. It's working this shit out that's a problem. They make it seem so complicated. Now, how much you use, of course, is always based on size your plants the amount of light you have how many plants you have because if you had a four week veg and you're six weeks into flower you have a 10 week old plant but you wouldn't feed a plant six weeks into flower that's 10 weeks old like you would a plant that's still 10 weeks deep in veg you wouldn't feed them the same so don't confuse plant count and plant size and bucket size don't confuse these things with the information that they're telling you on these bottles because all of these bottles are based on a four week veg and an eight week flower with one 1000 light and 10 plants that start off in one gallon buckets and get moved to three gallon buckets. If you have anything other than that, you're going to have to adjust these nutrients accordingly. For instance, let's say we put 350 PPM of both of these in. I can tell you that 350 PPM of CalMag is like one seven one. I think it's 150 N it's 150 cal and 50 mag. I think it's like two iron, but it's 50 mag. Where something like this, that's a zero, zero one. If you put 350 PPM in, you might be getting 200 PPM of mag. 
the big deal difference. If you add 350 ppm of each of these, if this is a 10, 2, 3, 5, that's 10, and we put 350 ppm of this in, 350 ppm divided by 10 is 35. If the N is 2, 35 times 2 is 70 ppm. If we add 150 ppm of N, we now have 220 ppm of nitrogen. So the combination of these two suddenly gives us 220 nitrogen, 105 P, and like 175 potassium, K. So suddenly we have a huge boost in nitrogen because we added this to this. And now this flower is now a grow nutrient based on the nitrogen. Just like these two products equal this one, which just about equals one ninth or tenth the strength of that one. So everybody makes a mag sulfur. Almost everybody makes a CalMag, all the nutrient vendors. Almost pretty much everybody makes a CalMag. If you think of calcium magnesium, you think of Tums. Avoid all this. Use from live chat. Use human urine, CalMag plus silica. That's why people grow their own dope, because this guy's big move right here is to use urine. And so I'll have a little more to say about that later in one of the videos that I put out. Just to let you know, I'll have a little more to say about that later. But in the meantime, when I say they're all the same shit for the nutrients, I pretty much mean they're all the same shit. When you look at the periodic table of elements, When we look at the periodic table of elements, yep, there's nitrogen where it's always been, right? What is that? It's a seven. And P right there below it, 20, what do we got? 25, let's see. And then we got a potassium somewhere on here too, right? NPK. Now, I know you guys always hit me up with that question about the, oh, here's the K. And I know you guys always hit me up with that question. Oh man, there's different forms of nitrogen. Oh man, nitrogen is everything. And then there's me at the other end telling you that nutrients are nothing. Well, I don't mean nothing. What I mean is that nutrients are worthless with respect to yield. And the reason that I always tell you guys that is this. This is a tray of basil. 30 days old. It got, it got nothing. Ah, I need the wireless mic, damn it. This is a tray of Clonex solution. Basil, it just got Clonex solution. Now these other trays, they tested different products. Some were root boosters, microbes, root hormones, like root fuse and roots by Humboldt nutrient. There was great white and orca to test these things. So, in terms of that, we're testing these products, but I'm not really testing any nutrients because this is the root race. So I wanted to show you that. But when I say nutrients are worthless, I mean, in the scheme of things, I don't care which nutrient you use. You must use a nutrient. You must have a certain amount of food to get a certain amount of yield for the plant. However, that yield is based on light. Imagine growing with no light. You could feed with nutrients, and I know you're going to make the same argument, imagine growing without nutrients. But the fact is, they say a nuclear winter will block out the sun and all our crops will die. They don't say a nuclear winter is going to eat up all the nutrients and our plants are going to die. And even here, honorable, um, even this guy says both are important. And to yes, some extent, both are important. But in terms of light, in terms of nutrients, what's worth more is CO2, light, and water. If before you add more nutrients, you should be worried about the, th the law of minimums and the three inputs to photosynthesis, light, water, CO2. Because if you increase the CO2, like uh, if you increase the CO2, like I did with green pad, you're going to end up with roots. <laughs> Uh, 
Those are the green pad roots from adding CO2. And that's because light water CO2 are the only three things in the photosynthesis equation. More light, more water, more CO2. But you can't just add more water. You know what happens? You know what happens when you add more water? Um, I've got a customer. I guess it's time to uh, probably end the show in a minute. And you know what happens when you add more water? You just overwater and you kill your shit. And you know what happens when you add more light? You just overlight and you kill your shit. So the only thing left is CO2. You've got to add a lot of CO2 before you need more light and water, though. And nowhere in there do nutrients exist. And we look at the chart, of course. There's only one N, one P, one K. And yes, there may be NH3 and NH4, and there are different types of ammonical nitrogen, and there are, you can combine potassium and phosphorus in different ways. But so potassium and phosphorus, it's still the element that's on the periodic table. And when it comes to that, there are only so many elements. And so here's nutrient companies just putting different dresses on the same pig. Is that an expression? Different dresses on the same, I mean, different shades of lipstick on the same pig. I mean, there's only so many things you can do with nutrients. And you see, once you understand what's inside them, there are some things like experience, like my microphone, and like the last caller's problem that he had with the biofilm in the mag sulfur. All right. Of course, again, today I did not get into Project Grow House, which I really wanted to get into today because I've been thinking about it. You know how you guys build your room? I've been building Project Grow House, and this is where I'm gonna show you how to turn $10,000 into $100,000 a year production inside your house. And I wanted to go a little bit more over the used equipment because I got some really good deals, especially on that uh, Solus Tech I got for like 30 bucks. Um, if you want those grow hangers, <laughs> you wanted those light hangers, I mean, that I had that, 10 fistfuls of tied together. Stop by the store, I'll give you a pair for free if you untangle them. Of course, if you have any questions. The Grow Book, the 20 Week Tracker, a poster issue you get for free, gardens and grow rooms. You also get All About Nutrients, which has all that information that we discussed today, including feed charts and numbers and examples of how to mix this stuff, all the stuff that I went over today. Don't forget, I've got these No More Grow More cards because I already know every question and every problem you're going to have. Of course, when you go to your local hydro store, Great White, Green Pad, Clonex, Vortex, Thermoflow, Mondi, these are the sponsors. These are the major products that you're going to see. Like Clonex Rooting Gel, right? I mean, like a billion clones can't be wrong. All right. On the Grow Boss, this is the end of the show. We're going to start again tomorrow. The show will be a little longer. The store doesn't open up until 11 tomorrow. We start the show at 9 a.m. If you have any questions, you can always call my hotline. You can, of course, visit the Grow Boss. I sell, we have all of my books are on here, right? If you need an ultimate, if you need an RO, I make an ultimate RO best in the industry you can literally get it down to a one-to-one -one waste totally controllable on your end i go over all of that in this video up here i've got the mega meter because i got tired of all the other meters being so expensive and dying this thing's 79 bucks 85 ship i probably get one out of 150 back and of those probably three out of four just needed to be recalibrated so i hardly ever get these things back for 85 bucks that's what you're looking for all right i'm the grow boss we'll pick this up again tomorrow if you have any questions 84 grow boss these are my sponsors i appreciate the support thanks so much